Hello! In this video, I will show you all the steps needed to design these 3D printed and laser cut decals or ornaments from scratch using Adobe Illustrator and Onshape programs. In my classroom, students personalize these placards and attach them to their toolboxes for easy identification. I think it's a fun way to learn a new technology and it gives them a chance to express themselves creatively. In previous videos, I demonstrate how to use Tinkercad and SketchUp to make these ornaments. Links to these can be found at the top of this page, in the description below, and at the end of this video. Before jumping into how to make these with Illustrator and Onshape, let's take a closer look at exactly what we want to make. Often, you will have a clear set of design parameters and dimensions that you must adhere to, so this artsy ornament gives us more flexibility to be creative. It is important, however, to have some idea of the dimensions of your design before starting out. If you do not have a clear idea of your ornament's dimensions, measuring common household items that look to be of the right size can be a good place to start. In my previous video, the units for the software was in millimeters, but this time I'll use inches just to show how one deals with various units. I want my star to be two and a half inches wide, and for the 3D printed piece, I'll make it two millimeters thick with text that sticks up one millimeter above the top surface. With Onshape, you'll see how easy it is to work with a mixture of units. In my robotics lab, we often use 440 screws, so let's add a hole that will allow this type of screw to fit easily. In case you don't know, a number four screw has a major diameter of 0.112 inches, as shown in these tables here. Incidentally, the number 40 means there are 40 threads per inch. If you want to tap a hole so the threads can bite into the material, the hole size must be a little smaller than the major diameter. If you want the screw to fit freely into the hole without screwing, the hole should be a bit larger than the major diameter. As shown in this table, the free fit for a 440 screw is 0.1285 inches. But because the hot plastic extruded from the 3D printer comes out a little thick, we'll need to make the hole just a bit larger than the table suggests. From experience, I know to make the hole 0.144 inches or 3.66 millimeters. Okay, okay, okay. Enough planning. Let's get to designing. So the first step is to open Adobe Illustrator and create a new canvas. Because the design was in inches, set the unit accordingly. The canvas size here does not matter, but mine is 24 by 12 inches to match my laser cutter platform. It is a good idea to go ahead and set the color mode to RGB. Next, click Edit, Preferences, Units, and ensure all the settings are in inches. Do not skip this step. Make a star by right-clicking on the rectangle tool and choose the star shape. Then click your mouse on the canvas and drag to make a star. Try to get it so the feet align at the bottom like so. If you need to, you can move it around using the V tool. I'll modify the star's dimensions here because I want it to be 2.5 inches wide. It's a good idea to save the AI file now. Be sure to give it a descriptive file name and put it in a logical storage location. My students should save it to their robotics folder, not to their downloads folder or to the desktop. I'm naming mine 3D Star Ornament. Let's now export this simple example as a DXF file, so it can be manipulated by our CAD software in a moment. Highlight the figure and select File, Export, Export As. Be sure to choose the correct file type and the same storage location as before. In this tutorial, I will make a few example files, so this one is named Star V1. Next, set the CAD version to R13 LT95, set 1 inch equal to 1 unit, select the 8 color PNG option, 
select maximum editability, although we will change this later, and check export selected art only. Then press OK. Let's take a look at that DXF file now. Notice your folder has two files, an AI file and a DXF file. Let me open the DXF file with my eMachine Shop app. I'm using this software simply because it is quick. Just watch as I show you how a CAD program renders our DXF drawing. Note, I must select the proper units, which is in inches in this example. And notice the dimensions of the star are, in fact, what we expected. I can close this app now and return to our AI canvas. Let's stylize the star a bit by giving it some rounded corners. Select the figure, then click Effect, Stylize, Rounded Corners. Set the corner radius to a quarter of an inch. Note the sharp corners are still there to define the star, but clicking off of it shows the corners are indeed rounded. If you want to change the size of the corners, open the Appearance panel by selecting Window, Appearance. Then click Rounded Corners and make your adjustments. Let's modify the drawing with the same settings as before and see what that looks like in my CAD software. Be sure to select the star before exporting it. The new name is star v2.dxf. Notice the corners are not rounded. So let's go back to AI once more and fix that. This time, export the DXF file by preserving the appearance of the artwork. I'm naming this final file as star v3. Viewing it with my quick CAD app illustrates it works perfectly now. Finally, let's see what happens when we open the good DXF, but do so in millimeters rather than inches. Notice the star is now very tiny, less than a tenth of an inch wide. In fact, it is 25.4 times smaller than expected because we told our CAD the units were in millimeters, not inches. The lesson here is units matter, so always verify them before proceeding. We are now ready to begin working with our DXF file in Onshape. So open Onshape and follow along. Create a new document and name it appropriately. I'm naming mine Star Ornament. Next, press the hamburger and change the workspace units to inches. Then click on the plus icon to import the Star V3 DXF file. Click on the DXF tab to see the imported drawing. Right-clicking acts as the hand tool if you want to drag it around. In the icon menu at the left, select Ruler, Distance, and verify the star's dimension. It should be roughly 2.5 inches. Now, return to the Part Studio tab and create a new sketch on the top work plane. Locate the DXF button in the menu bar and select Insert DXF. Click on the Star V3 file and it will be added to your sketch. I always forget how to get to this button, which is one reason I made this video. Once again, use the ruler in the bottom right corner to verify the dimensions are about 2.5 inches. Can you tell I've been bitten by errors with units a few times? Click on two points along the arms and check their separation in the measure window. If your star is not level, follow these steps. First, draw a horizontal construction line as a visual reference with one end of the line at the very bottom of one of the star's feet 
and stretch it past the other foot. Next, highlight the star, deselecting the construction line if needed, and select the Transform tool. Move the pivot point of the Transform tool to the end point of the construction line and rotate the star until the other foot rests on the line. Delete the line when done. Next, extrude the star, giving it a thickness of 2 mm as discussed at the beginning of this video. Notice how Onshape converts this metric measurement to inches on the fly. Clicking back in the text box, we see the original units are preserved. Pretty nifty. If Sketch 1 is not visible, make it so by clicking here. Click on the top face of the star and create a new sketch on this plane. Next, reorient the workspace for a top-down view so we can make some reference or construction lines on top of the star. We'll use these to align our hole in text in a minute. Note we are still working in Sketch 2. Add a construction line between the two endpoints at the top of the star. Notice how the icon next to the mouse cursor changes to the midpoint symbol when we hover over the middle of the line. Add a point to the midpoint of this line, for this will help us align the parts in the next steps. Add one more construction line vertically downward. It should connect the horizontal line we just drew with the bottom of the star. Press the Escape key on your keyboard to exit the line tool. Next, add a point on this new construction line where you think you may want the screw hole to go. We can adjust it later if it's not in the right spot. We are now finished with Sketch 2, so save it by checking the green check. Now let's add the hole to our ornament. Click on the point you just added and then select the Hole tool. In the window that opens, set the parameters to the following. Simple, through, ANSI standard, clearance type, size 4, and a loose fit. Notice this creates a hole with a diameter of 0.144 inches or 3.66 millimeters, which is exactly what we wanted. Press the green check to accept. Now it's time to add some text to the ornament. I'll create a new sketch on the top face of the ornament and then select the Text tool. I need to draw a bounding box and enter the text as shown. I prefer the Roboto slab font with boldface. Your text is likely the wrong width, so use the Dimension tool to resize it. I know from experience that a width of 1.75 inches works well for this text. You can change this later if you wish. Position the center of the text along the center line of the star. To do this, first make Sketch 2 visible so we can see the center construction line. Next, select the Transform tool and then select one of the text borders. Reposition the Transform axis by grabbing the tiny circle at the vertex and moving it to the center of the text. This can be tricky and may require a few tries to get right. With the transform axis at the center of the text, grab the tiny square and move the text so it aligns with the center construction line of the star. Release it in your desired position. This might be easier to do from a top-down view. Any additional text added to the sketch will be grouped together and I do not want this. So I will close Sketch 3 and repeat the previous steps to make the next bit of text. I'll start by first creating a new sketch on the top plane of the star. Race me to see who finishes first.
I am finished with my new sketch, so I will close it now. Next, select the two pieces of text and extrude them upwards one millimeter, like so. Now all that's left to do is export this part so we can 3D print it. Doing this is simple. In the Parts section, click on Part 1, and then right-click on the highlighted part, and select Export. Next, name your part, select the STL format, and choose Millimeter Units. Recall that most 3D printers assume you are working in millimeters. The STL file will be downloaded to your computer and you can feed that into your 3D printer software for printing. If you wish to also cut this out on your laser cutter, we do not need to reinvent the wheel. Simply duplicate the Part 1 Studio tab. Perhaps it is best to first rename the Part Studio tabs so we keep things organized. I'm naming mine Star for 3D Printer and Star for Laser Cutter. Next, open the Star for Laser Cutter tab and then open Sketch 3, which holds one of our text boxes. Right click on the text and select Edit the Text. Choose the Alberta Stencil font, which is generally better for laser cutting. Close the sketch and repeat the process for Sketch 4's text. Now, edit the Extrude 2 settings. First, choose Remove. Then change the type of extrusion from blind to through all. Finally, change the direction of the extrusion by clicking on the little arrows to the right. You are now ready to export the face of the star for laser cutting. Do this simply by right-clicking on the top face of the star and selecting Export as DXF slash DWG. Next, name your part and select the DXF format. The DXF file will be downloaded to your computer and you can feed that into your laser cutter software. Well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. In the next and final video of this series, I will show you how to make an ornament from a drawing or an image, once again using Illustrator and Onshape. Thanks so much for watching.